In this video, I'm gonna show you how to repair or extend a Starlink cable. Now you might think that it's a special kind of cable that the Starlink is using, but in fact it's not. If you look closely at it, it just says category 5E. It's shielded category 5E cable, but it is just data cable. So it's perfectly possible to repair or extend it. And you can do it to a custom length, or you can even use a different color cable or whatever you wanna do, it's fairly flexible. What I'm doing here today is not technically difficult, but it is a bit fiddly. If you've never done data cable terminations before, then they can be a little bit frustrating. I would recommend strongly that you use pass-through heads and not normal heads, um, because it just makes things a lot easier, and you'll see why in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the bits and kit that we need, and then we'll get into uh, doing the repair or extension. Okay, so I've got a few bits of kit here. So the first thing I've got is this kind of tools. So I've got some snips here. These are electrician scissors, but you can use like side snips or anything. You just want something with a nice sharp blade on them. These are very expensive. I'll put some links to all of this kit and some cheaper alternatives in the comments below. There'll be Amazon affiliate links, so any support you can give us will be appreciated. Right, so snips. Next thing, crimpers. These are RJ45 crimpers. If you're gonna be using pass-through heads, which I would suggest you need pass-through crimpers, you need to make sure you get the right ones. And they basically, they've got a little blade on here and that will cut the cables flush, which you'll see shortly. The next thing I've got is a cable stripper. Um, these are really useful. You can use like snips and stuff, but it takes a bit of practice. So if you've never done it before, I would recommend a cable stripper. Right, okay, then I've got over here, I've got what's called pass-through RJ45 heads. Now these are Cat6A uh, pass-through heads, and they've got little guides with them that come, come along with them as well. The reason I'm using Cat6A is, although the cable's category 5E, it's quite fat. So when I tried this with Cat5E shielded connectors, the cable didn't fit in the connector. So I've gone for Cat6A because I know that the cable's gonna fit in that. The difference between Cat 6A and Cat 5E is that they are the ends of the cables are kind of um, staggered rather than in a straight line, which makes them a little bit more difficult. But I would use these ones, and the guide makes it a lot easier. But we'll, well, again, I'll show you that in a minute. The last thing I've got here on the table is two weatherproof couplers. So these are basically just RJ45 connection connectors or couplers. Um, and but a weatherproof, so you can use them outside. If you're gonna join the cable internally, then you can obviously just use non-weatherproof ones. They're a little bit cheaper, but um, these are perfect for outside. They're completely waterproof, so yeah, perfect for this situation. Okay, the other thing I've got down here is a little bit of extension of a cable. So this is just a Cat6 cable. Strictly speaking, I should be using shielded cable, but I didn't have any at the moment, so I've just used this, uh, this Cat6. I've just stuck some heads on it. You don't have to use one you've made yourself. You can just buy a pre-terminated patch cable. If you're gonna be using it externally, you just wanna make sure that you are using external grade cable. Um, the, the difference between external and internal grade cable is basically internal cable will crack in the sunlight. It's not UV proof and then it will take a long time, but it will crack and then you've got water ingress and then the cable could fail. So it's always best to use external cable if you're using it externally. Um, you can use Cat5e, Cat6, Cat7, whatever you want to use. Um, the fatter it is, the harder it is to deal with. So just beware of Cat7 and Cat6. Uh, sorry, Cat8. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the cable, I'm going to cut it, and then we're going to just talk about how we're going to do this. Okay, so I've got a cable here, um, and I'm literally just going to cut it. Obviously, if you've, got repair, if you've got damage on it, the bit that's damaged, you want to cut that out. So make sure that that's not going to get impacted because you don't know what you've done to that, to that part of the cable. So what we're going to do is just cut this straight down here. I'll pop this down here. And then the first thing I want to do once I cut it is we're going to strip it. So when you're using the strippers, ones like this, they've got depth on them. So you screw this little thing here and it sets the depth of the blade. And you need to make sure that you have got the right depth because you don't want it to be too deep because basically what you do is you nip the pairs inside. You either cut them completely or you'll partly cut them. If you partly cut them, you can get intermittent faults or you get like issues where it doesn't work properly. It's working kind of, but not very well. So it's really important to get the depth right. If you're not sure, I would just practice on the end first. So just like go right to the end and try stripping there and making sure that you're not cutting too deep into the cable. I've already set these, so I know these are the right depth. So let's go onto here. And I've got about, probably half an inch or a centimeter, just over a centimeter there. And that should be enough. So just twist that round. 
and set that off and then just bend it to one side and it'll come off like that and it's quite a thick external sheath on this it's well protected right and then the next thing you've got is some blue foil so we're just going to peel that blue foil back and under the blue foil you'll find a little grounding wire we need to keep that so i'm going to just fold that back there and then there'll be a uh, load of plastic plastic covering and we're going to pull that over with the foil and then once we've got the foil and the plastic to one side we're going to get a snip and we're going to cut that off but just be very careful when you do that that you don't cut the grounding wire or nip any of the pairs or cut any of the pairs it's quite easily done right so now we've got what we need we've got pairs and our grounding wire the grounding wire can stay to one side we don't need that for a while and then we're just going to separate our pairs so we'll grab the oranges first so we've got a white orange and an orange the white orange goes first then it's the orange and what you want to do is just get your thumb and your finger and just keep running them over the cable and what we're trying to do is just get them as straight as possible but also get them to like being aligned next to each other so they just get used to being in that in that position so next what we do is grab the white green and we're going to grab that and again we're just going to keep running our fingers over the cable we just want the white green because the next one we're going to go for is solid blue so after white green solid blue and then we'll just run our fingers over that again and then it's white blue and then it's green then it's white brown and then it's brown and we'll just keep you can't you can't spend enough time on doing this just straightening them out straightening them out making sure that they're all in the right order and they're all happy to be next to each other because it just saves you a lot of hassle later so just keep doing that until you've got a nice uh, sort of smooth set of wires like that it will fray out at the end don't worry too much about that because we're going to cut that in a minute so we've got a little bag we've got the guides so these little tiny plastic things in here and they're basically just to help you get the cables into there if you didn't have this it's really tricky to get them inside so just a little tiny plastic guide so i'm going to pop that down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sort of go towards the end where the cables are still together in a nice little pattern and then i'm going to just get my snips and just cut straight across the top nice and straight cut off the top and then basically what we're going to do is put this guide on you want the fatter ends to be going down so put that over the top let's check if i've got that the right way around yeah, so the, the stagger starts at the back, if that makes sense. So push this over the top, and basically you want the whites to go to the back and the colours to go to the front. So they, that has happened there. I can't really show you that because I haven't got another camera, but the, the colour is at the front and then the whites are at the back, and that's nicely put on there. So we'll keep hold of that guide, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the head out. And basically you want to pull the guide up so it's sort of towards the end of the cable but not don't pull it off the end it's nothing more frustrating than pulling it off the end and with the colors at the front facing you you then want the head with the sort of copper bits on it facing you as well don't do it the other way around because it won't work so if we put this on and we just gently slide that on and we just want to make sure that the colors are still in the right order they've not like got twisted between the guide and the and the head so push that through and then basically you'll get the cables come through at the end like this that's that's absolutely perfect that's that's exactly what we want we just double check they're all in the right order and then we can get the crimpers and we're just going to slide them over the top and just be a bit careful when you do this because sometimes they fold over and get caught in the crimpers and they should come through the end of the crimper like that and then we'll just crush the crush them together and that basically that blade just cuts them flush so then you've got a completed head well not quite we've got to do the grounding wire so we'll get this little grounding wire and we're just going to take it round the little bit of the back here just going to wrap it around that bit just so it's in contact with it and then we're going to pull that bit forward so it's wrapped around the cable like that it's holding the grounding wire and then these bits here we're just going to push them in now normally you would put a boot on this cable and the boot is just a bit that goes over the bottom of this and just sort of holds it all in but actually it's, it makes put the couplers a bit more difficult so I tend not to use boots in this situation so right so now we've done one side we're going to do exactly the same to the other and uh, we will get them connected right like I said that might have taken you a lot longer than it took me um, it's just because you're inexperienced don't worry about it and there's absolutely no shame in individually putting the strands through the guide if it helps you or if you want to it's sometimes a bit easier if you cut back more of the sheath and you've got some longer pairs to deal with but whatever works for you 
just make sure you've got those uh, in the right order and you've got all the head looking good. Okay, so once we've done that bit, we just need the cable and the coupler. So if you're doing a repair, you're just gonna need one coupler. So you just literally just put the coupler on and join them together. Obviously, if you're doing an extension like this, then we're gonna put a coupler on each side and a coupler on each side, and then that will be in the middle, basically. So I'll do that, and then we will connect it all together. So basically, these are the couplers. You're just gonna unscrew it all. So it's all just unscrews. Put that down and just keep unscrewing everything, basically. This one's a little bit knackered because I've already used it, so I'll put that down. And put that down. Basically, you can see the little coupler in the middle there. And it is a shielded coupler. It's got metal shielding on it, so it is suitable for shielded cable. So that's the middle bit. And then we've got the two side bits. I need to unscrew this bit as well. And inside, there is just a little sort of plastic uh, blue thing or it might be a different color in your case you just pop that out they've got little splits in them so you can put them in afterwards they don't need to be on the cable before you put the heads on which is handy and we'll do the same with this one and then you need to put the end bits so the, these bits at the end this bit oops, sorry this bit and this bit at the end let's pop them on there and put the other one on there uh, and then we put these bits on, so the bits with the funny little frilly bits at the end. Put those on like that. Don't let go of them, don't let them slide down the cable, it's really annoying to try and get them back. And then you get the coupler and just pop each head in and you should hear a click like that. And then we'll get another one this side and we'll pop that in. There we go, click. And then we're going to wrap that round. So I'm making a move like this. Wrap it round. And we're going to screw these bits onto the coupler first. That's what you want to do first. So screw this one on nice and tight. We'll tighten this up in a minute so it's not a massive issue. And then put that on. Let's make sure they're straight. So you've got the coupler covered now, but the little frilly bits are out. And then basically we just need to grab this blue little seal. And we're going to, oh, I don't want to drop that. We're going to push that into the little frilly bits, making sure that we're not caught any of those bits on the inside, we want them all on the outside. This cable's quite fat, so um, it might poke out a bit, but that's fine. Okay, so we put that on, and then once we've got it in, and it's all the way in, and none of the bits are sticking, sort of folded over or anything, you get this bit, put it over, and just screw it, and screw it, and screw it, and screw it. Now, like I said, this this cable, this coupler can do lots of different lengths, uh, sorry, thicknesses of cable, so it will kind of squish out at the end because this cable's quite fat. So we'll just do that, and that's perfect. That's sealed it, basically. It doesn't look completely neat there, but that's sealed it, so that no water can get into the, into the gap there. It can't get into the gap here, and we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. Okay, so let's tighten that up as tight as you can. And that that is uh, now connected. So that would be, if you were doing a repair, you literally just put that on and uh, your cable would be connected again. So just the bit you cut out is gone, then we did that. The principle is exactly the same if you're doing this with this cable, except obviously you're just putting this in the middle. So I'll just do that quickly and then you can see what I mean. Okay, so there we have it. You've got the extended uh, cable there. So this is our bit in the middle, and then we've got two couplers. Obviously this can be as long as you want, pretty much. Just remember that the total length of the cable should be no more than 100 meters. Otherwise you're gonna get problems. Now one thing to say is that this might be your first time doing data heads. So whether or not you've got this right the first time, you will only find out once you've reconnected everything and got the Starlink back online. If the dish is not connecting, then you've messed something up. So you might have to do it again. Um, but there is really no other way of testing the cable because we've got those USB-C bits on the end. Uh, we can't actually use a cable test to test this. You can test your patch, patch cable, but you can't test the heads themselves. You're just gonna have to look at them and make sure you've done everything right. 
There's lots of good videos on how to do a Cat6 or a RJ45 connector. So uh, yeah, have another look if my guide has not been enough. So um, that is about it. I hope this video has been useful. Please do subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.